Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 7th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Prague, Czech Republic. A couple interesting diaries to start out with. A first one by Didier, of course, yet another Python script by Didier, and this time about finding interesting domain names. We had this in the past. His is a little bit of a different approach where you actually train the script to tell it what normal words look like, and it then looks for abnormal one, which of course come out to be more random domain names. Mark Baggett has a similar script looking at it from an entropy point of view. What's sort of different uh, with Didi that you actually can train it with different dictionaries so you can make it somewhat language specific. And then we got the second guest diary by Ali Decantana, this time again about BitTorrent Sync uh, version 2, but uh, from a log file perspective. So what you can find about this particular tool from the log files it leaves on a system. And to keep this week interesting, we got a couple of updates from Cisco. Cisco patches, first of all, a vulnerability in the Elastic Services Controller. Apparently, there were some static login details that were shipped with this product that have to be removed. And that's done with this latest update. And the auto IT service apparently allows uh, the execution of shell commands as root without authentication. That has also been addressed. So take a look if you're affected by any of this week's updates. They appear all to be pretty easily exploitable, even though I haven't uh, really seen an exploit uh, out yet for any of them. And NetSparker came up with a pretty interesting way how you can find weak hashing algorithms used for passwords. Now, typically, you would, of course, review the source code or maybe the data that's stored in the database. But if you don't have access to the source code or the database, then, of course, this can be a little bit tricky to work out. Well, NetSparker here has an interesting idea where you essentially just set up two accounts with two different passwords. However, those passwords happen to be hash collisions for known weak password hashes. For example, we do have collisions for MD5 and SHA-1, so you could use those. And if then these passwords work on either account, then you know this weak hashing algorithm is being used. Of course, a small variation in how the passwords are encoded or so may break this test. I would still recommend that you take a look at the database, take a look at the source code. That's probably the quickest and most promising way to figure out what algorithm is used to hash passwords. And then we got more details, including an exploit for a vulnerability that was patched in Bind in June. This is a CVE 2017-3143. Now, Bind, of course, is uh, the famous Unix name server. And due to this vulnerability, it's possible to bypass TSIC authentication. TSIC is a fairly simple authentication encryption algorithm. It relies on a shared secret between the two involved hosts and typically it's used for zone transfers or dynamic updates. Of course, the dynamic updates are particular dangers. Typically, the way it works is that, for example, a DHCP server has the secret that's necessary in order to send updates to the DNS server. But due to this vulnerability, what's happening is that if you provide a DSIC digest with the wrong length, where the signature algorithm you specify doesn't match the TSIC length, then the answer is still signed and the digest, the wrong digest that I provided, is used as a prefix. And that can now be used to forge a signature. So the end effect is that an attacker would be able to send forged DNS 
updates. That's of course very bad because now the attacker can change DNS entries at will. The attacker can also trigger DNS zone transfers, which of course also would be bad because then the attacker can leak information about your DNS zone. There are some additional protections of course that you could apply like limiting by IP address and the like in addition to using TSIC. Probably not a bad idea anyway, but uh, patch bind if you haven't done so, because with uh, this release, we now have an active viable exploit for this vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.